Hey, this is Pastor Chris, and I wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, Donald Trump's Easter posting. I find it very, very interesting to see uh, how he posted uh, all on Easter, which for us as Christians, uh, whether we think of Easter, there's some Christian traditions that don't single out Easter as a special day of worship. There's others that do, but the principle behind Easter is that uh, it is a recognition of the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a time uh, where we reflect on what the meaning of his death was, what his crucifixion meant, and what it means that he is risen from the dead and is alive and is in the heaven and is going to come back again someday to earth. Now, many people don't believe that. I get it. If you do not believe that, I do. I believe that Jesus died for my sin on the cross, and I believe that he rose from the dead. And many Christians like me do believe that and accept that as truth. It's been a long history in our country for political leaders, especially presidents, to recognize the significance and importance of Easter to the Christian community, even if they are not practicing Christians themselves or not very active in their faith, there will still be some acknowledgement of that. Donald Trump's Easter postings were uh, an excess of 70 posts on his true social that were not about Jesus Christ, not about his significance to the church, but all about him and his travails and his difficulties. And it, it comes across as, as very uh, whiny, kind of babyish kind of complaint, playing the victim. Uh, and it was just really hard to work through and see. But one of the things as I was working through and thinking about this saying, oh no, I've got to do another video because I've really been working on making videos to talk about the evangelical uh, Christian, the leaders in the evangelical Christian church, their, their corruption, their compromise, and how they're selling out Jesus for, for power, influence, and wealth, and prestige, and how that is causing great damage to Christians in the evangelical tr uh, tradition in the United States. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about that because Donald Trump's main support base is the evangelical Christian community. Without evangelical Christians, he would have very little comparative support in the United States. So I, I, I do want to focus on a lot of that. But what I've what I've realized is uh, just when I think he's going to stop doing something alarming, Donald Trump does something alarming. I'm not so concerned. I am concerned, but not concerned. The focus of this channel is not on the political aspects of what he's saying and doing so much as the the religious and moral aspects of what he says and what he does. I'm more concerned with the morality and the religious component. So when I started reading through uh, the posts and the things that he made uh, on uh, Easter Sunday, uh, it became very concerning because when I get this glimpse into his inner life and I, I'm more and more beginning to believe that he really does believe in his heart that he is some kind of God anointed, appointed messianic savior. I think he really does believe some of this worship that comes from his cult that make him almost out to be a semi-divine kind of being that is above all, that is, that, that is greater than anybody else. And I think part of that is because he does have that, that uh, real strong strain. He just appears to have this malignant narcissism along with the antisocial personality disorder. And those traits, as you, you look at them, that kind of stuff and the adulation of his fans and, and, and feeding all that will just inflate him and inflate him more and more. And I think he really has deluded himself into believing some of these things. So when he's reposting articles, almost like worshipful praise of him, uh, he, he is, I think, really, really accepting of that and is really believing it. And what I find it to be very interesting uh, as, as a... Um, as somebody who's watching this, is that I think that 
this kind of stuff has been getting worse. I didn't realize that because, you know, in 2016, after the Access Hollywood tape, when he talked about how he abused women and here, and then kind of looking at it and realizing, just briefly looking at him, at that that the, the business success was more hype than reality when you get into the actual business, uh, his business acumen and, and his long history of being abusive uh, at, towards women and taking advantage of women and boldly talking about it on different talk shows and everything about how abusive uh, he would uh, take advantage of women. I just said, I can't vote for the man. So I, I just kind of tuned him out from 2016, 2020. I, I just said, you know, I, I, I can't support him. I can't support the Democratic candidates. So I guess I'm going to just have to go third party. I can't, uh, I just, I just can't support either side, but I definitely knew I couldn't support Donald Trump. So I just kind of tuned all this out. So now that I'm looking at his behavior now, cause I'm saying to myself, what I've seen when I've started to really pay attention in this last uh, year, last uh, six to eight months to a year, what I, what I've begun to realize is that, that he was not always like this. The first time around when he was, uh, campaigning, he said a lot of rude things. He was kind of crude. He was kind of uh, brash and all that. But he was much more disciplined. He didn't. He didn't put his narcissism and his antisocial personality kind of uh, issues out on out on the table for everybody to see. He was much more guarded and protective of that. That makes me wonder. Uh, and again, a lot of medical news, a lot of people are, are speculating. And as a nurse who practices and deals with dementia all the time, uh, I see where they're saying, and I see a lot of legitimacy to say that he's really showing signs of symptomatic dementia. And that will uh, pull back some of his uh, impulses and ability to restrain himself, especially when he feels like he's under a lot of pressure. And, and uh, I, I just am noticing as I'm comparing how he is now to what I'm discovering what he was back in 2016, uh, that he he wasn't the way he is now, that it was much more concealed. Uh, it, was, it wasn't just so obvious, the narcissism, the antisocial behavior. And so that uh, is, is interesting to me. The other thing that's interesting to me is one of the things that I've noticed uh, beginning to observe is uh, after looking at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention where Donald Trump was and proclaimed himself to be a Christian on their side and how they were all in for him. And I'm gonna do a separate video of this and realize that the people and the member organizations that hold the keys to communication, particularly since many Christians now are going to uh, the organizations of the NRB, these Christian organizations to get their news, how much they are sheltering and shielding their audience from a lot of what Donald Trump is saying and doing and a lot of issues that he has and presenting only a filtered view of him to make people think that he is an honorable, good man and that he's being unjustly persecuted and that uh, he's trying to save America and God has blessed him and all these things. They're painting a picture that they want followers to see so they will so their followers will support Donald Trump because if Trump wins, they get power and influence and wealth and prestige. So it's almost like a selling out of Jesus, I believe. And I'm gonna share more about that when I make the video. When I finish it, I've kind of got everything set and I've reviewed the NRV convention. And I'm not so concerned with Trump's speech, but what the the what was going on before his speech and what the members were doing and saying uh, of the NRB. So we're gonna look at that in, in, a, in an upcoming video as soon as I can uh, get to have the time to get down and get that video made. But the, the reality is, is that a lot of uh, what's going on and a lot of what's happening with Donald Trump is, ref is just deeply troubling, but a lot of Christians, as particularly evangelical Christians, 
because they, they are afraid to look at alternative news sources and just stay with the right wing conservative media that is protecting Donald Trump. Uh, they, they're not just getting uh, a broad view of news. Um, and they're, they're getting just a one-sided perspective and it's hard to make a good balanced judgment. Uh, I find that it's better to look at both news sources and, and both sides are biased in my opinion, as I look at them, both sides uh, present in, incomplete pictures of who, who they favor and exceptionally bad pictures of those who, who they're against. So you have to kind of wade and sort through all those kinds of things. And I, I'd encourage you if you're, you're watching, if you're a Christian, don't be afraid to look at some of those other news sources. Consider what they have to say. Maybe you'll find out some things. Maybe you'll see and hear Donald Trump in his own words saying things that would be deeply alarming to you that the right wing media is shielding from you that you don't get and you don't hear and you don't see. So just, I encourage you to look at both sides. So onto this, uh, his Easter postings. First of all, uh, they're all about himself. At a time when it's Chris, uh, Christians are celebrating Easter, it's all about himself. In fact, I've got here his uh, uh, main Easter post on his True Social. Uh, he says this, Happy Easter to all including crooked and corrupt prosecutors and judges that are doing everything possible to interfere with the presidential election of 2024 and put me in prison, including those many people that I completely and totally despise uh, because they want to destroy America, a now failing nation. He doesn't have a very positive view of the United States. He does not think uh, that American citizens uh, are going to pull back excesses from both the right and the left, that the United States by and large uh, is a citizenry of center right, center left, that when people try to go too far left or too far, far right, American citizens pull everything back closer to the, to the center. And that's, that's been, a, as long as I've been alive, that's what I've, I've seen in, in, over 50 years, get, you know, I think of over 50 years being really uh, aware of what's going on in the world. And probably when I was a kid, it wasn't much different. There, there's always this pull to the center, but he, he does not see that. Also notice that all his struggles are, are uh, an attack on America. And that's part of what's going on in his psyche is, is he sees himself as some kind of messiah and some kind of savior. And because he sees himself as that, because he sees himself as indispensable for America's future, that, that, that without him, America is just gonna fall apart. So if people don't support him, they wanna destroy America. In his mind, he really believes that without him, I believe he really believes this. Without him, uh, America would just fall apart and America needs him and, and needs to be totally 100% devoted to him and loyal to him exclusively and to not challenge anything he has ever done, not to, not to bring uh, to light any dark deeds that he may have done in secret and try to bring them to light so others would know, especially when they're concerning. And that's what a lot of these trials are, is to bring things that were done in darkness and secret with, with his colleagues, with those uh, co-conspirators, uh, to bring those to light so other people will know, so they can make a judgment for themselves what, uh, what they feel and what they think about these, these things. Uh, and, and again, uh, people say, well, all the trials are just politically motivated. Well, I say, yeah. I mean, isn't it politically motivated, the investigation into Joe and Hunter Biden? Uh, yes, uh, people are going to be sprung by, by their alarm at what others do 
and maybe motivated uh, by politics to some sense. But the thing about our justice system is our justice system weeds out the politics. You have to provide proof. You have to provide evidence. And when there's trials before a jury, uh, you have to convince a jury of peers that the evidence is beyond a reasonable doubt. And even at beyond the trial, when you feel that the trial is unjust, we have a system where you have multiple levels of appeal, both on the state level and the national level, where, where there are people looking at facts and law to make sure that the trial is just and fair. And by and large, overwhelmingly, our system has worked well to bring justice in the United States. And so, so well that we are uh, been around for, for well over 200 years now as a nation. So as, as a Christian, uh, I look at the, the court system and I don't despise it as much as Donald Trump does and, and, and his followers do. And, and I recognize uh, that there may be some political motivations, just like there's political motivations to go after Joe and Hunter Biden, but you gotta bring forth the proof. You gotta get the evidence. And, and, and then we see and we evaluate the evidence. Um, but it's, it's just uh, interesting how his whole post, as I look at it, about Easter, again, mentions nothing about Jesus, nothing about the church. It's just all about how he feels he's being attacked and persecuted, and it's full of slander, it's full of reviling, things that scripture says people that practice those things won't uh, inherit the kingdom of God. In addition to that, he posted a couple other things that I think were, were really interesting and some other people have brought those to light. <clears throat> the first one is a, an article uh, that appeared in uh, the Washington Times on March 28th, just a few days ago, The Crucifixion of Donald Trump by Tim Constantine. Um, and I thought this was, was interesting. Again, not so much that... I think what I see interesting is this reveals his mindset. When he has somebody who's a fan of his, who, who is a, a MAGA follower uh, saying these things, likening his uh, legal troubles to uh, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and, and begin to put those two things together, he, it's showing that he really does think himself as a Christ kind of figure, as a Christ kind of savior. I think that further reveals that he really doesn't understand the person and work of Christ and what Jesus uh, did on the cross and what he is doing now and that his kingdom is not of this world. And, and that, uh, again, it just shows a, a fundamental misunderstanding of the Christian faith he, he claims to have. But anyway, this article says, uh, as Easter Sunday approaches, much of the world will commemorate the arrest, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the holiest days on the Christian calendar. In this time on earth, in his time on earth, Christ spent his public days doing good works. His efforts helped people, both collectively and individually. In a variety of ways, in his general ideas, made the world around him a better place. Jesus drew crowds wherever he went. He was celebrated by a segment of the population, which in turn instilled fear in others. Leaders in the temple chastised him for working outside the structural norms. Political and religious leaders were concerned that his popularity posed a threat to their hold on power. That fear and the hunger for perpetual power led some to want to eliminate him. They had Jesus arrested, they mocked him publicly, they took him before Pontius Pilate and hoped Jesus would be educated guilty and sentenced to death. And so here's this picture where he starts out talking about Christ and, and Jesus in his, in his appearance before Pilate, his appearance in the court system, uh, an innocent man. And yet this is how the article transitions. He goes, Donald Trump spent four years of his life as president of the United States. During that time, he enacted policies that built a solid economy, secured America's southern border, and appointed three well-qualified justices to the Supreme Court. He brought Arabs and Jews together in the Middle East. Many would consider those good works. 
Mr. Trump drew crowds wherever he went. He was and still is celebrated by a segment of the population. This seems to instill a huge, it's still huge fear in some. Leaders in Washington have continually chastised Mr. Trump for working outside the structural norms of Washington's political elite. Democratic Party leaders are concerned that his popularity poses a threat to their hold on power. Their fear and hunger for perpetual power have led some to want to eliminate Mr. Trump as a threat. As a threat. Uh, what I find interesting, you know, as they begin, he begins to draw all these parallels, is he's trying to get the readers, this, this uh, follower of Trump, to see that, that Trump is a as somebody who is just like Jesus. Think of him as just like Jesus, what he's enduring. And, and the article ends, there's, there's parts in between these segments that I, I, I uh, read to you. You can go and read the whole article uh, if you want to get the whole context of it. But it's pretty much in context. I'm trying not to take things out of context. I should say get the whole flow of the article. Perhaps the biggest remaining question is regardless of how courtroom crucifixions go, whether Mr. Trump will experience his own political resurrection in November. So tying a victory for Trump to a resurrection, that's how the article uh, ended. And I think that that, that is a very uh, interesting that Donald Trump sees that article says, yeah, that's me. It's I, I'm just like Jesus. What I'm going through, I'm innocent. They're just persecuting me. They're just trying to get me. I'm good for this country. I can save America. Only I can save America. People need me. And and my resurrection is going to be when I win in November. I, I, am, I am suffering now for the people. Uh, and I think more and more, I think he really does see himself as this messianic Christ-like figure. So he sees that suffering. He sees he's taking himself and he thinks he's doing some kind of work on behalf of the American people uh, as he goes through, through all this. And somehow that God is going to uh, bless all of that. And it goes even further. He also posted uh, from February 29th, 2024 in Gateway Pundit, uh, do you believe in miracles? Something supernatural is happening with President Trump. We are all witnessing the Trump miracle. It's written by Wayne Allen Root. Again, this isn't just an article he's just posting. Oh, this just came out. This has been out for a while. And he's posting this in connection with Easter. He's posting that uh, crucifixion uh, trial of Jesus comparing to him story on Easter Sunday, making no mention of Jesus. And he does, and, and he uh, has this as well. Um, and part of this is um, this article. Again, I'm, not, I'm just gonna uh, stay within the flow of it, give you some quotes so you can look at the whole thing. Uh, yet after all that, President Trump holds the lead over Joe Biden in virtually every national poll leads in every battleground state that determines the election, leads among Generation Z, the youngest voters, and in some polls leads among Latino and black males. A recent poll showed Trump leading among Jewish voters in New York State. How is this possible, the writer says. And he goes on to say, it's supernatural. It's biblical. It can't be explained. It's a real life miracle. And he goes on to say this, uh, my childhood best friend is a strong believer in God, but he is non-political. Yesterday, he reached out to me via text to say, I'm going to say something very odd now. I don't believe Trump can be stopped. He's touched by God. He's a superhuman. He's got something supernatural supporting him. I don't think anyone can stop him. In my lifetime, I've never seen a human being on the earth surrounded by this supernatural force. Trump doesn't even age like all the other presidents in history. He looks the same as eight years ago, even after all he's been through. He doesn't even get ever get down, even though he's taking deadly shots left and right. He's superhuman, unstoppable, unflappable. We are witnessing a miracle. There are those words again, supernatural and miracle. Do you believe in miracles? It's time to start believing. What's happening is supernatural. Everyone is starting to see it. Everyone is starting to believe. The signs are there. 
Trump is the chosen one. Trump is sent by God and blessed by God. We are all witnessing the Trump miracle. My friends, you see that? He's posting that person, this writer, proclaiming him to be chosen by God. Words that were used to describe the person and work of Jesus of Nazareth, the Savior. And as Christians, we don't want anybody and anyone who does take away from Jesus' work and to augment or elevate their own self. We, we talk in 1 John 2 that there is the Antichrist that is going to come, that final opponent to Jesus when he returns. But 1 John 2 tells us that there will be many Antichrists along the way. People that are opposed fundamentally to, to God, people who are leading uh, uh, Christians away from Jesus Christ. And that he can't see. He cannot see how his behavior and his conduct and all the things that he's doing and how he is leading uh, his followers, how he's leading them away from Jesus Christ and bringing them around himself to offer the worship and the devotion and praise that belong to Jesus Christ alone. And because of that, we're seeing a, a cult developing that is becoming increasingly at odds with the biblical Christian faith. And you notice that Donald Trump has no respect for Jesus Christ or the church uh, to even acknowledge that on Easter. It's all about him and his, what's going on in his life and trying to make it all about all the devotion uh, of people towards him that, that he is somehow says God appointed savior. He, he, his, his trials and everything are just like the trials of Jesus Christ. Well, well Jesus was sinless. Uh, Trump is not in, in, in many ways, he's shown himself to be a very immoral and corrupt man by his actual behavior, by things he's publicly acknowledged and said that he's done. And, and it's, it's now that it's going into the realm of criminality, uh, all of a sudden he's saying, no, I, you know, I may be uh, all this, but you know, I, I didn't cross the line into criminality, but that's for the courts to decide. And I think that as, as Christians, we really need to spend the time to really be thinking and considering uh, these things, because it is very, very important for us as Christians to acknowledge and to recognize what is happening uh, right now with Donald Trump and to be very, very concerned again about his behavior, about his conduct, and that we really need to wake up and move outside of our comfort media uh, outlets to get and see and hear his own words and his own uh, writing and things for ourselves because we're not getting them if all we're doing is watching Christian media. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm also gonna make a shorter version of this video that will be easier for people to forward around uh, to their friends and those that are concerned. Uh, thank you, God bless.